Hello, and welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries morning show. My name is Nicole Moses, and I am with my friend and coworker, Maddie Vincent. Maddie, how are you today? You know what, Nicole? I am thriving. And you wonder <laughs> why? Why is that? 70 degrees outside. The time has changed. I get home from work, and there's still sunshine out all across the city of Charlotte. The trees have little buds on them. Oh, I and that. I just think the audacity of these little buds to just decide we're done with winter. We're going to bloom. And then it's just amazing. I am so thrilled. I love this time of year so much. And I want to know what everybody is doing to celebrate spring. Yes. What are you doing, Nicole? Um, I love spring. I love the weather. I love I don't know if anyone remembers, but I said my favorite thing to do is outdoor dining, a patio, restaurant. I love it. But um, a fun thing I'm doing this spring is taking a trip out to California with my siblings. I'm so excited. My brother's going to be moving there this summer. So we're going to go and check it out with him. So Maddie, what are you excited about for spring? Anything fun? Okay. I am very excited. My favorite coffee shop here in Charlotte has a strawberry matcha latte it is so good and they only sell it during the spring and so I have lots of plans to drink a lot of strawberry matcha and um a huge plan that I have that I can't wait to do is I'm going to the cherry blossom festival in Washington DC which is just like a bucket list trip I'm so thrilled and so excited I can't wait for it I love that. Well, I see some people in the comments saying that it's still a little cold where they are. So we're so sorry, but spring is coming for you too. I promise. You know, just come on, visit us here at the Proverbs 31 Ministries <laughs> office. We will be glad to share a strawberry matcha with you, show you around and sit yes, in the sunshine. Exactly. So just let us know when you want to come. <laughs> Oh, well, Maddie, we have a very special guest today and we're covering a very important topic. So I'm so excited to bring out our guest, Kendra. Will you join us? Hey, girls. Kendra. Hey, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's fun to be back. It's fun yeah. to be back on the morning show. Kendra, your hair looks amazing. Thank you. You girls were talking about spring and from going from dead to life. And I think my hair has also made the transition. Wow. Huge. I know. <laughs> we were just talking about favorite things we're looking forward to in spring. Let us know what you are looking forward to. Okay. So I planned a time to go up to Ohio where I'm from and stay with my grandma and she's going to teach me some family recipes. And so I'm pretty excited. I don't cook all that much, so it could be a disaster, but I'm really looking forward to spending time with my grandma. So that's what I'm going to go do. What are you, what's your favorite family recipe? Ooh, okay. She makes these things called pie crusties, which kind of sound weird and gross, but they're like the extra pie crust dough that she adds like cinnamon and sugar and butter and rolls them up and then bakes them. And they're, these, they're like these little scone things that are so good. So maybe I'm hoping to learn that. Oh my like, goodness. After, after you learn, I would love to go with pie you. crusty night, you know, yeah, we can do yeah. it. <laughs> Um, Kendra, will you tell everyone what you do here at Proverbs 31? Yes. So my title is senior manager of the ministry studies team, but simply put what that means is I get to work with some very brilliant people on our first five team and online Bible studies team. And ultimately we get to share God's word with women all over the world through our app, our first five app and through our online Bible studies that we put together. Love that. Well, today we are tackling a topic that is hard for most women, if not all. Um, and so we're so thankful that you're here with us to, to talk about it, but we're going to be talking about body image and it's sort of this like unspoken struggle among not just women, but men as well. But um, so I'd love to start the conversation with how do we even start addressing this in our lives? Yes, I think it can be really hard to address because it's a topic, like you said, that isn't quite talked about a lot, um, or it can be 
centered around or built around a lot of shame and guilt. And so um, we know that not everyone struggles with their body image, or maybe you don't struggle with who you see in the mirror. But for those of us who do, I think an easy way to address um, if we struggle with this or even start the topic of conversation is by going back to that one moment where everything changed. And what I mean by that is that one moment where maybe you were living your best life, you didn't, you didn't think anything negative about your body, um, you loved the way you looked, and then maybe something was said to you, maybe a picture was taken that you didn't like, um, or maybe you didn't like the clothes you had on, and it's that one marked moment that changed the way you view yourself. And for me, that one moment happened in elementary school. I think I was around eight years old. And um, my classmates were all sitting around this table and I think it was snack time or for some reason we got cookies and I love cookies. You know, I wish it was pie crusties, but <laughs> we got cookies and the person passing it out. I remember her stopping and wish, whispering something in my ear to the extent of you're only getting one cookie because you're fat. And I don't think I let it really hinder me all that much as an eight year old girl. But I can see the ways that that one moment, that one sentence has shaped how I view myself and has shaped how I, um, how I live my life, whether that's through what I eat, whether that's through my emotions and how I view myself. And it all came to a head in 2020. And I know that's a big year for all of us. A lot happened in 2020, but um, I was weighing myself every single morning. And the number on the scale dictated the type of mood I was in the rest of the day. And my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband, recognized that if the number was down, maybe even 0.2, I would be on top of the world. I thought I was doing great. I would probably um, eat some chips to celebrate. And then if the number had gone up even slightly, 0.1, my mood would be not great, a disaster. Um, and then it would really alter how much I ate the rest of the day. And so he saw that that was a, a unhealthy habit and pattern. So he helped me seek some good counsel around that whole um, struggle I had. And then also he made me throw away my scale, um, which I'm grateful he did, but um, he helped me through that. And so I see that I actually really did struggle with body image and it all stemmed back to that one moment when I was in elementary school. I think that's such a valuable thing to kind of teach us, Kendra, is that if we can sit back and like really think through what was that one moment, it could probably help us pinpoint a lot of different things that are kind of going on in our life. Um, something that is really unique to your story is that you had someone, Will, notice mm -hmm. that, hey, there's an issue here and I'm like noticing this pattern and you were able to seek help from there. But for someone who's maybe like silently kind of struggling yeah. with this and maybe feels a lot of shame and scared to maybe ask for help or admit that they have a problem, what would you say to them and how would you tell them what to do next? Yeah, that's a good question. First, I would say I, I get you. And I and even though we might have different struggles, because I don't want to act like I know everything that you're struggling with, um, I know what it's like to maybe play the part like everything's okay, but on the inside, I'm really struggling with this one area. And so, um, and I also think if you do struggle with this, there is a foundation of shame or guilt. And I think we can all kind of rally around those unhealthy emotions that maybe sometimes that we deal with. Um, and so I get you. And then second, I want to encourage you and let you know that you're not alone in your struggle. And I know that for a fact, because um, we're doing a study about this very topic. It's called I'll start again Monday by Lisa Turkhurst. And uh, we have over 50,000 women who have signed up for this study because they see that um, they see that they want help and they want hope. Um, they want the hope of the truth of God's word to um, help them because what they have been leaning on, me included, people's approval, um, number on a scale, isn't necessarily working anymore. Um, and so you're not alone. There's a lot of women ready to talk about it and ready to encourage each other. And um, we're really looking forward to what we're gonna do through this study. I'll start again Monday. I love that. I can't believe you said 50,000 women wild? are yeah. signed up for this study. I'm so excited 
I just love that there's that many women who are ready to face this with each other and to let God do a new thing in them. And so we would want you to be a part of it. We don't want you to miss out on that. So if you'd be interested in joining us, we're going to leave the link to that in the comments and you can start, you can sign up today. Kendra, when does this start? Okay, get ready, girls. The study starts Friday, April 1st, and it's not a joke. I know for a lot of us, we look at April 1st as April Fool's Day, but I promise you, April 1st, we're all geared up and ready to start the study together. And our team actually saw April as a wonderful opportunity to take the whole month, April 1st, to April 30th and rally around 30 days challenge of um, breaking unhealthy habits. So starts April 1st. And I do want to make note that all starting on Monday is not a diet plan or a workout regimen. Um, I think that's really important to say because it's not like we're going to send you a five point or five steps into losing weight. That's not really what we're after with this. Instead, the author, Lisa Turkhurst, has struggled with this very thing before, and she has a way of bringing God's truth to the forefront to show us that um, what is really important and the real answer that we can grab onto to help us when we do have those unhealthy habits. I just love the way that the Lord can use anything that we're going yeah. through to just draw us closer to him and increase our dependence on him. Kendra, is there anything else that you want the person to know that might be thinking of doing this study with us? Yes. Well, one, we would love if you join us in Bible study. It is quite fun. It will be, it will have its hard days, I'm sure, because this is a hard topic, but we would love for you to join us. Um, and like I said, it's not a diet plan, but we have a feeling you're going to find something way better and much longer lasting than a diet plan would be. And then I think you're going to be really surprised um, out of 50,000 women there's going to be at least one, I know it, who is going to see something you post on social media in regards to, in regards to the study or your story, and she's going to um, find herself in your story and not in agreement that she understands you, and I think that's a beautiful thing when God's girls come together and can say in agreement, like, I understand, and now let's go find the answer together, and I think we're going to, we're going to do that. I can't wait to see all that God does in women's lives through this journey. So I am so excited. Would you mind praying for us, Kendra, as we sort of close out and go about our day today? Yeah, I would love that. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together on the morning show to um, just be in community with one another, God. We thank you for the technology that allows us to do this. And we thank you for every woman listening live or to the recording later who is able to um, just come together and find encouragement through your word, God. Lord, I pray over um, a woman who may be struggling in this area of body image or body shame or body dysmorphia, whatever that looks like, Lord, I pray you meet her exactly where she is in this moment. I pray that she feels your love, Lord, from the top of her head to the tips of her toes, God, that she feels so loved by you that all the lies that she may have believed or um, all the lies that the enemy is throwing her way, God, just flee um, in your love, Lord. Lord, I pray that we remember that we are chosen by you, that we are created by you, that every um, gifting that we have is put into place by you, God because we are your workmanship. And Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this Bible study that's about to start, Lord. And we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Well, Kendra, that was just a sermon and a prayer. Thank you for that. Um, and thank you for being here with us today. Um, we hope that you are leaving feeling a little equipped um, with the truth that you need to get through your day. Um, and we really hope that you will join us for our next online Bible studies it's going to be just amazing to go through such a tough topic together. Mm -hmm. um, so the link to sign up is in the comments and we can't wait to see you there. Yes. And don't forget to come back to join us live again on April 14th. We're going to share four simple tips to help you grow in your relationship with Christ. So we can't wait. We hope to see you there and we hope everyone has a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye friends.